Welcome, this is James Dewar, your host for the San Antonio Financial Show. The James Dewar Show, heard every Saturday at 10 a.m. on 9.30 a.m. The Answer and the seven steps to financial success. Today, we're privileged to have a local attorney here, Michael W. Jackson. Michael, welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. And what we try to do, Michael, we try to have experts in the community, especially I always tell people, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a CPA, and we always want to have people, we always want to educate the, the public. And one thing that the, edu- the public's not really educated is on the role of mediators. Uh, in, in our dispute resolution attorneys, uh, they, don't, they don't understand the concept. Uh-huh. So today we're, we're going to try to, to, to uh, tell the, the American public about, uh, you know, what is alternative dispute resolution? Well, I've been a full-time mediator now for a little over a decade. I've uh, practiced law here in San Antonio going on 37 years. And uh, about 10 years ago, I started mediating, and now it's uh, 100% of what I do. Yeah, Probably eighty-five percent of the cases I mediate are family law matters. Okay, and before we were talking off air, and you, you used to do litigation. Which one do you enjoy more? Oh, mediation by far. Okay, you, you see that you help people a, a lot more and on the keeping the courts out of it sometimes. Absolutely, if we can keep people out of that courthouse, then we've done a good day's work. Okay, so uh, what is the difference between like uh, mediation and arbitration? Well, in arbitration, it's somewhere between mediation and a courtroom trial because in arbitration, you have an arbitrator Mm -hmm. who actually serves sort of in the role of a judge. Okay. The evidence is presented to the arbitrator. He listens to it, processes it, and then he issues an arbitration award, which is similar to the judgment of a court. You take the award down to the courthouse, and then it's converted into a court order. Oh, wow. Okay. But it's much, uh, it's much more direct, it's a lot less expensive, and it's, uh, a, frankly, a lot less stressful than the courthouse. That's an anxiety-producing event that goes on downtown. Okay. And uh, if people want to contact you about uh, mediation, arbitration, uh, how can they reach you, Michael? Well, my office is at 8200 Interstate Highway 10 West. Uh, that's the Fountainhead Tower. I'm in Suite 875, and my telephone number is 210-348-7600. 7600. So it's 210-348-7600. So Correct. if anybody has any questions, they call for you just to, to talk about what the process is, or is somebody at your office they should talk to? Or? Well, probably Karen will answer the phone, but okay. if they uh, ask to speak to me, they'll uh, they'll get to. Okay, great, great. So, um, uh is there is there a way when you're doing arbitration mediation uh are you saving money in that process significant amounts of money when you mediate a case again but primarily what i do is family law cases and a big part of that is dividing up assets and liabilities okay when when people get divorced that's that's what's got to happen and once you have an idea of what those assets and liabilities are, rather than engaging in formal discovery, which is very expensive, going down to the courthouse and having pretrial hearings and motions and depositions, once you have an idea mm-hmm. of what the couple owns and what they owe, and you're able to distinguish between what might be separate property and what is the community estate, then they can come down to my office, but almost always with their attorneys. Right. And we have an initial session where I let the folks know what mediation is about and how it works. And then we break up into different rooms. And then it's kind of shuttle diplomacy. I'll go from one room to the next, carrying offers and counter offers until we narrow the gap between the two positions. And we get about 90 to 95% of the cases that come in for mediation resolved by agreement. Okay, so that's interesting. So you, you actually keep the parties separate in, Except a, in a for the, traditional mediation. Yes. I do have an opening session in which I explain the process to everyone. Okay. But no one talks with me. I don't give them a chance to vent because mm-hmm. a lot of times when they come in, and they are pretty stressed out, and right. uh, it may come as a shock to you, but some of them don't like each other. <laughs> I never uh. could imagine that. <laughs> so, so let's kind of take a step back. Tell the public about community property state, and in Texas, at least pre- 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 predominantly Texas, what does it mean? Well, Texas is a community property state, and so you have to think of it as three people: the husband, the wife, and the couple. Okay. Now, the law presumes that everything the couple possesses 
belongs to the couple, but Texas recognizes separate property, and essentially that's anything that was owned before marriage, okay. inherited, received as a gift, even if it's from one spouse to another, any kind of disability compensation, um, recovery for a personal injury to your body, and ultimately your social security benefits. Mm -hmm. Everything else belongs to the couple. And it's almost like you have to picture in your mind two blank sheets of paper, and each one has a line down the middle. Mm -hmm. Sheet number one is assets and liabilities. What do they own and what do they owe? Once you've totaled up those two columns, you subtract the liabilities from the assets, and that's the value of their net community estate. Okay. Sheet number two, line down the middle, husband on one side, wife on the other. You move everything from sheet number one over to sheet number two, so there's a column of assets and liabilities under husband, column of assets and liabilities under wife. Most of the time, those bottom line numbers are gonna be very similar, 50-50. But that's not the law. The law in Texas is that the judge, if you go to court, must make a just and right division of that community estate. And okay. that's, that's a floating number. It doesn't mean what either of the parties thinks is just and right. If you go to court, it's what does that judge think? Okay, so you're at the mercy of, of the judge and his wisdom, which hopefully will be good. But Sometimes. if you go to a mediator, you can take out that external component you and can. not have the judge make your decision, but ha have both the parties make a decision jointly through yes. a mediator. Uh, the, the most compelling reason in my mind for people to contemplate mediation, especially in a family law matter, is that they are the decision makers. The people whose lives are going to be affected by the decisions make those decisions. And the vast majority of times, they're much happier with the outcome when they are the ones who came up with that outcome. Okay, so if they want to contact Michael W. Jackson, do they ask their attorney uh, to, 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 to uh, maybe recommend you? Or how, how does that process work? Or do they even, uh, if they have a conflict with, with a uh, two uh, parties go directly to you even before attorney? It's rare for people to come to mediation without advice okay. of counsel. Um, it happens occasionally, but by and large, people are always represented by their attorneys okay. at the mediation. And you would want that. I, I do. Think, yes. I, I prefer that because then they've got counsel to advise them. Mm -hmm. They can talk over issues while I'm out of the room and then to come back okay. in and present me with what they've come up with. So their attorney accompanies, uh, comes with them yes. to the meeting. Yes. And then when you're when you're in the room with that one party, is the attorney in the in the room? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They're so he, always he's aware of everything that's going on, and he's able to talk to the the party when you go to talk to the other party. That's right. And advise them. Okay. Yes. Great. Great. So uh, t tell me one to clarify community property. When does that start? On the date of marriage, the community is created. Okay. So everything that is acquired after that date of marriage, again, is presumed to be community. Okay, okay. And then um, one question I was thinking about is uh, what family law, met, uh, what about family law uh, mediation, what it is and what it isn't? I mean, you know, what is the, the uh, nuances on that? Well, what it is, again, is the opportunity for the parties involved to take charge and be the decision maker. Okay. What it isn't is it isn't the courthouse. The, okay. the courthouse is, particularly if there are children involved, the courthouse is the last place in the world that a couple want to be because it is an anxiety-producing experience. There's nothing comfortable about it. Mm -hmm. And because what goes on at the courthouse goes on within what's called the adversary system, which is all lawyers have to work with, and by its very nature, by the name of it, you can tell what it is. It right. pits people against one another, mm -hmm. and there's no experience like it. There's nothing to prepare you for it. Once you get up in that witness stand and you have a skilled trial lawyer representing the other party whose job it is to make you look bad, right? unless you just have to go through that, you do not want to go through that. Okay. And the cost is, the cost can be just oppressive. And litigation is not cost efficient. And, and mediation, does it usually happen at one sitting or is it sometimes um, it take multiple sittings? And? It, depending upon the size of the estate, mm -hmm. but most of my mediations are concluded within one day. Oh, wow. And then, uh, 
So we're again we're talking with Michael W. Jackson, and he can be reached at 210-348-7600. That's 210-348-7600. Uh, and you know we, I just want people to have a opportunity to to go to the James Dewar show. We have a website jamesdewar.com, j a m e s d u e r r dot com, and they'll be able to watch this video oh, and right. rewatch it if they got any questions. And that's why we want to put the number out there because they can go to our website or go to Facebook, oh. and they can they can call you on that. But but it's such a I really uh, really. Uh, pleased that you were able to come on the show today. Well, I appreciate the invite. Because a lot of people don't know, and they go directly, and, and it's good for them that to be able to ask their attorney, hey, is mediation an option? And uh, hopefully they would, would say yes. I think they'll almost always say yes. Yeah. Lawyers know that the chances of a case getting resolved at mediation are excellent. Mm-hmm. And the family law attorneys, especially here in San Antonio, they're a they're a great group of people. Yeah. They, they, yeah, and I know most all of them. They are just as fine a group of people as you'll find anywhere. They care deeply about their their clients. They want to do a good job for them. They want to keep them out of situations that's going to cause them pain and and do long term damage to the especially again where kids are concerned. Right, you, you don't right. want to do long term damage to that relationship because. They're not going to be husband and wife anymore, but they're going to be mom and dad for a long time. Forever, yeah. So, so Michael uh, Jackson, I appreciate uh, you being here today. I appreciate the invite. And uh, hopefully we can do it again. I'd be glad to do it. Thanks again. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, sir. You bet.